Hello guys and welcome to another profile tree video. So in today's video we are going to be covering the core web vitals. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. Now before we dig deeper into the core web vitals we need to know exactly what they are. So core web vitals are a set of user centric metrics introduced by Google to measure and quantify the user experience of web pages. Now they focus on three specific aspects of web page performance and that would be loading, interactivity and visual stability. Now the core web vitals provide website owners and developers with insights into the performance of their websites and help them identify areas for improvements to deliver a better user experience. Now we're going to go ahead and explore the three core web vitals in more detail. Our first one there is the largest contentful pane. The acronym for that is, is LCP. So what exactly is it? LCP is a core web vital metric that measures the loading speed or, or perceived performance of a web page. Now it specifically focuses on the time it takes for the largest content element to become visible within the user's viewport. Now the largest content element could be an image, it would be a video, um, it could be a block of text or any significant piece of content on the page. Now LCP provides insights into how quickly that element is loaded and rendered impacting the user's experience of how fast the page appears to load. We're going to use our website profile tree as an example. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go ahead and reload this page and see which loads first. So you can see straight away that this website is performing well as everything has loaded at the same time. This is including our text, our images, as you can see below, and even our video. But of course you are gonna receive some websites with per LCP. You always have to make sure that you provide a good user experience in doing so. Uh, that's why websites should aim for an LCP of less than 2.5 seconds. Uh, if the LCP exceeds this threshold, it indicates that the largest content element takes too long to load, leading to potential frustration and negative user experience. So that's what I mean basically about the website. Of course, be it a non-e-commerce website or an e-commerce website, say your products don't load in time, and the user has to keep refreshing, then that means your LCP is too big and it just, you know, yeah, you will have users that will be a little bit frustrated to use your website and they'll look elsewhere. So there are a couple of ways to actually improve the LCP and it involves aspects of the web page loading processes. These would be including the, to have a efficient server response. Now ensuring the server response uh, you have to ensure that it responds quickly to requests and delivers the required resources in a timely manner. Now, another one would be the browser render time, so optimizing the code such as HTML, CSS and JavaScript to minimize rendering blocking resources and allow the browser to process and display content more efficiently. So say you have big chunks of HTML code, you want to maybe reduce those lines of code into uh, singular lines of code or just a, a couple of uh, lines of code and uh, try to avoid big blocks of them. Maybe use less images as well to improve the site's performance. Uh, Relook the CSS as well and the JavaScript of course check out the layout and display and you may have some improvement. Now this only applies if you are of course doing a full code website. If you are using a website builder it's not really something to worry about, it's may, mainly to do with your plans and how much storage you can have within your website. Next would be the network efficiency, so optimize images and other media files using compression techniques as well, leveraging and, and leveraging browser caching to reduce downloaded times. Now, now another one is prioritizing critical content, so identifying the largest content element and pr prioritizing its loading so it becomes visible to the user as quickly as possible. Then of course you have the 
CDN, which is Content Delivery Network usage. Now leveraging to a CDN uh, to deliver content from servers uh, geographically closer to the user, uh, reducing network latency as well and improving overall loading speed. Uh, another one, so that's pretty much a couple of ways there. Um, for the tools though, what you could use is the likes of Google Page Insights or you can even use Lighthouse. So we'll just use this as an example. So we'll analyze this. So you can see that the core web vitals assessment, uh, it is fairly good. So just to describe what the um, LCP is, this is mainly how the results chart work. So of course, if you get a 0 0.1, then it's good. If you get a 0 0.25, then it would need improvement or it is fairly poor. And of course we have uh, different core web vitals assessment, such as the FID, which is the first input delay, which we'll look at later on. Then of course we have a cumulative layout shift as well. We'll take a look at that later on as well. Now with uh, Lighthouse, what that means is if you go onto the actual uh, website, you can go ahead and proceed to use the inspect tool. If you right click, you'll see below that there's an inspect tool. If you select on the top, you'll see the Lighthouse and you can analyze a page load. This just goes through the entire page, it sees the performance as well, uh, and it'll provide you a final score at the end. So we'll wait for that to fully load and I'll get back with you guys. So that's how the peak performance is looking. So you've got the accessibility as well, the best practices and SEO. So now we're going to take a look at the first input delay, FID. So FID. Uh, which is a core web vitals metric again. Uh, it does measure the responsiveness or interactivity of a web page. Now it specifically measures the time it takes for a web page to respond to the first user interaction, such as clicking a button, tapping a link, or selecting a menu item. Now FID is crucial for providing a smooth and interactive user experience. When a user interacts with a web page, they expect an immediate response. Now, if there's a significant delay between the user's action and the browser's response, it can, of course, lead to frustration and perception of unresponsiveness. So that mainly goes to the fact that, say you click on a button on a page, and let's just say I click on the get in touch button, but it doesn't link me to that and it just keeps rendering a load. That would be, that would be an FID. So that would be the first input delay. That means there's a delay in between that and of course it can lead to a bit of frustration. Now FID is measured in milliseconds and the lower FID indicates a more responsive web design or web page to provide a good user experience. Websites should aim for an FID of less than 100 milliseconds. But yes, uh, there are several factors that can impact FID and that would be including uh, JavaScript execution. So long JavaScript tasks can delay the browser's response to user input. So optimizing and breaking, uh, breaking it down. Uh, JavaScripts into uh, smaller chunks can help reduce the FID. So if you break them down, uh, as I mentioned, it will help the reduce the FID. Now the other one is main thread blocking. So activities on the main thread, such as rendering and executing JavaScript can block user input responsiveness. Minimizing main thread blocking tasks improves the FID. Another one would be network latency. So if a web page requires additional data to process a user's input, network latency can contribute to FID de uh, delays, optimizing server respond times and reducing network uh, round trips can help improve FID. Another one as well would be the efficient event handling. So ensuring event listeners and handlers are optimized and execute quickly to respond promptly to user interactions. Uh, you can also find more information on the cloud functions on the Google Cloud itself. So this is the right event driven functions. 
Uh, you can see it from the Python Go and then uh, .NET as well. So there's a couple of information uh, based on it as well, just to help improve the event handling. Now again, as I've mentioned, you can use these page speed insights to take a look at the what the real users are experiencing, uh, in time real users. And then of course you could use the likes of Lighthouse or other performance monitoring tools that can provide insights and recommendations on improving FID. So if you improve FID, website owners can deliver a more responsive and interactive user experience, leading to an increased user engagement, higher satisfaction, and potentially improved search engine rankings. Next one is cumulative layout shift. So CLS. So CLS would mainly be the uh, a way to measure the visual stability of a web page by calculating the amount of unexpected layout shifts that occur during the page's lifespan. So layout shifts can be fr frustrating for users, especially when elements move unexpectedly, causing them to click on the wrong item or lose their place on the page. Websites should target CLS score of less than 0.1 to ensure a good user experience. So this would be an, uh, another example of it as well. So if I was trying to maybe click, if I uh, stood still here and I was about to click on the video and all of a sudden the page bounces up or the page bounces down, uh, it makes me click something else, then that's what CLS would be doing. So of course there are ways to improve that and again uh, website owners can use various, tool, various tools uh, like Lighthouse, page, uh, page Beat Insights again just to take a look at the cumulative layout uh, shift and you can see here that it is at zero so it's good so there's no issues with the actual web page. But that reaches the end of the video so as you guys could see of course, if you focus on improving the core web vitals, website owners can ensure that their web pages load quickly and provide a positive user experience, resulting in increased user engagement, lower bounce rates, and potentially improving search engine rankings. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do let us know in the comment section below. But other than that, I'll see you guys for the next video. Thank you very much for watching.